I am reading the first poem from Blended Voices. Thank you, Kathleen and Sophia for putting this together. I think it's a beautiful addition, but I wanted to share one piece in here because, um, and a little bit about if you don't know how it was put together, we had to select a line from a poem by a Virginia poet, four lines actually, and integrate those into the um, into the to our own work. So I chose four poem or four lines. I went around and around and around about how to do that, and then I realized that I really had to do. Um, I, I, there was an image that that really caught me. It was called, and it became the title: "Sleep Well, Small Ballerina in Jade." And something about that really, really attracted me. I just was like, wow, that's that's a, such a neat image. And then I started thinking about it. I started thinking, it's a memento. It's that image is a memento for me. And um, so I wanted to contextualize that in some way. So here's the poem. When I drove you to school that final morning, you laughed, said, I love you. And waving goodbye, danced into the school beyond the white fence. Only later did I hear the sirens and follow them to where I'd left you, a place swarming with police and I not knowing how a moment could bleed to grief, watched from behind the yellow line, hearing shots from inside, my throat burning though I could not speak. The light itself cracked, empty like chalk figures after a crime, hours stretched each second. Oh, who I I who so wanted to own some earth found myself in some tumultuous sea boiling within me as I drowned. So that's a persona poem. And um, I just wanted to contextualize those images and it kind of made sense to me. And with all of the shootings that have gone on and the horror of all of that, I just wondered what it would feel like to be a parent in that situation. I couldn't imagine anything worse. So I wanted to put that. And thank you for putting that together. Uh, my book is The Lost Books of the Bestiary. And I wanted to share uh, four poems from here. And, and some are shorter, some are not super long. But I did want to preface it a little bit because a bestiary, as you may know, is a during the medieval period, uh, there were animal poems or stories, and they often had a moral Christian les lesson that was going on with them. So that's what I drew on for this, although it started, this whole book started from a poster that my wife brought home for the kids when they were young, which was an alphabet poster with animals doing the different letters. That's, uh, so I thought that was so cool, so I was going to write these alphabet poems. Well, over 20 years, they kept morphing and changing and changing until I ended up with this book. And the backbone of the book I'll, I'll share with you um, is, a, uh, is based on a Mi'kmaq, uh, which is a native tribe out of um, Nova Scotia. And it's based on their cosmology. And I'll explain that in a second, really in the second poem. First one is bestiary. And um, this actually builds on some images from um, the cave paintings that we found in, uh, that have been found in France and also in Spain. And we've, they've found that in fact, in some of the caves where the paintings are, that if you stand in a certain place, your voice reverberates off that space. So they think there were these were ritualized areas. Bestiary. Each letter has an animal self. A dreamscapes sound surge of scale and claw. 
urge to move with bright breath of hiss or thunder. Its flutter born from umber and burnt sienna, bone crush and manganese blown around a hand on a rock face, just where the voice reverberates its syllabic dance in wrist flick and moan, urging forth the herd or causing rain to cross the plain in a purpling bruise. This, the opening in the monoglot of tongue, something to listen for, something to lock in and like and remember. This faint blue hued by light across an expectant eye, a crimson whisper in a breath where each detail of nuthatch or katydid, skink or smoke haze begins its slow fade towards extinction. This is what's frayed here, found among strung beads of jasper and tourmaline, a nasorious shell smudged in red ochre, a final act spoken a totem dreamed forth in cut amber, caught microbe by microbe in silence becoming mime. <laughs>